Welcome back to Discovery Lab Online. In 2020, we are celebrating an important centennial or 100 year anniversary. This August, it'll be 100 years since the ratification of the 19th Amendment, the constitutional amendment that prohibited denying citizens the right to vote on the basis of sex. And on June 28th, it'll be the 101st anniversary of Texas ratifying the amendment, which made Texas the first state in the South to do so. But let's take a step back. What even is a constitutional amendment? And what does it mean to ratify an amendment? To answer these questions, we need to jump all the way back to the 1780s and take a look at the U.S. Constitution. The authority to amend the Constitution lies in Article 5. It states that an amendment may be proposed either by Congress with a two-thirds majority vote in both the House and the Senate, or by a constitutional convention called for by two-thirds of the state legislatures. After an amendment is proposed, it goes to the states for their consideration. If three-fourths of the states ratify or give formal approval to the proposed amendment, it becomes part of the Constitution. So as you can imagine, getting a new amendment through is really difficult. To date, there have only been 27 amendments to the Constitution, with the first 10 of those being ratified all the way back in 1791. Okay, now that that's cleared up, let's get back to the women. Even though there have been people theorizing about women's political participation for hundreds of years, the suffrage movement in the U.S. really kicked off in 1848 with the Seneca Falls Convention in upstate New York. There, attendees pressed for the advancement of women's issues on the national stage and, importantly, for women's suffrage or the right to vote. At first, this movement was mostly northern, and it didn't really gain momentum in the South until after the Civil War. In Texas, there were some failed efforts to consider women's right to vote starting in 1868, but the movement really took off in the spring of 1893. Mrs. Rebecca Henry Hayes of Galveston called for a convention of men and women to meet in Dallas to form the Texas Equal Rights Association. Their objectives were to, and I quote, advance the industrial, educational, and equal rights of women and to secure suffrage to them by appropriate state and national legislation. And in June 1894, the TERA held their first state convention right here in Fort Worth with about 50 attendees. Between the 1890s and the 1910s, dozens of different leagues for women's suffrage were formed in Texas, though it's important to note many of these early suffrage organizations did not allow Black women to join, even though they too had been advocating for women's suffrage at the national level for years. Texans were split on the idea of suffrage for women, and not all of those who were against it were men. In 1915, Pauline Wells formed the Texas Association Opposed to Women's Suffrage, or TAOWS, and many prominent Texas women joined. Those who were against women's suffrage argued that women were already equally represented politically because of their husbands, and that if they did get the vote, they would be now overrepresented. But there were still many who favored it. They argued that without the vote, women's issues would be forgotten and that women were effectively being taxed without true representation. And others supported it to get more votes for themselves. Governor William Pettis Hobby made a deal with the Texas Equal Suffrage Association to support a suffrage amendment if women would support his candidacy for governor. They did, and Governor Hobby signed a bill for women's suffrage in Texas in 1918. But that was just at the state level. The decision still had to be made at the national level. Several suffrage bills were presented between 1915 and 1919, all of them failing by only a few votes. The bill was presented again in May of 1919. The House of Representatives passed the amendment, and two weeks later, the Senate followed. But it wasn't done yet. The state still needed to ratify the amendment. Thanks in part to the advocacy of suffrage groups, Texas became the ninth state to ratify the amendment. Ratification continued, and in August of 1920, Tennessee became the 36th state to ratify, giving it the three-fourths majority that it needed. And the amendment passed. But the work was far from over. Even though the 19th Amendment was a victory for many women, it's important to realize that the amendment didn't guarantee that every woman would be able to exercise their right to vote. And when it passed, it only really affected white women. 
Native Americans didn't get U.S. citizenship until 1924, so they were still cut off from the vote. And so were Asian Americans, who weren't guaranteed citizenship and the right to vote until 1952. And even though African American men had gained the vote in 1870, those rights were nearly impossible to exercise in the Jim Crow South. When black suffragettes reached out to white suffragettes to help them also secure their voting rights, they were often overlooked and ignored, even though black women's suffrage organizations were instrumental to the suffrage movement in the first place. So even though we can celebrate the 19th Amendment, we should still acknowledge that there was and still is arguably a lot of work to be done to guarantee that every American can fully exercise their right to vote. That's all I have for today. Remember, if you have any suggestions for future videos, send them to questions at fwmsh.org. Thanks for watching.